Uh, my name is Gary Brown. I'm an HPC product manager. Uh, there are two of us now. Ryan Chabot is the other one, who used to be uh, director of technical support. And uh, I'm going to talk about green computing and how to automatically manage power in clusters and so on. And let's see if this will advance. I don't know that it's going to advance. I'll just use the keyboard. That's not working either. There we go. Okay. Um, maybe it had to wake up or something. Uh, we're going to talk about power management and then about green computing that uses power manage and management. Green computing is basically going to be the automated power management, and then we'll talk about future power management possibilities of things that we can add to Moab and so on. Um, we're going to talk about how Moab performs power management. To do this, we're going to have to talk about node power states, what those are to Moab, uh, because they aren't necessarily the exact same thing that uh, the nodes have. Uh, in all their variety and so on. We're going to talk about power system jobs, uh, scripts that perform power management, and then how do all those three things tie together in kind of a theory of operation, and then how do you configure power management and customize power management scripts. Um, basically, Moab tracks two node power states that are simply called on and off, okay? On's pretty simple. It just means that the node power has been, power state has been reported as on by a power resource manager. Okay, and on means on. I think everybody understands that. Off does not actually have to mean off. Okay, off basically means to Moab, this node cannot be used for workload to put jobs onto. Okay, and so off can mean off. If you want to completely remove the power, you can do that. But if you want to do something else, which we'll talk about later, you can, you can do so. But just remember that uh, you have some flexibility in what off actually means. To run a job, Moab requires that the power state be on and that the workload resource manager, whether it's Torque or Slurm or anything else, uh, that it must be running and that it has <clears throat> reported node information. Uh, where it says reporting node and power information, that's respectively power reported by a power RM, uh, uh, node information by the workload RM. The workload RM must not report power state. That is really important, okay? Because uh, I know some people have tried that, and, and that's not going to work. System jobs, what a generic system job is, is a job that is not a user job, Okay, you're not going to really see it in a queue per se, waiting to execute. Uh, it does execute on the Moab head node or server where Moab is running. It's usually script based and most system jobs are asynchronous in nature. In other words, Moab starts a mob up and then goes on its merry way doing its stuff while that system job executes. Um, power system jobs, there are two system jobs that are used for power management. And we'll get into what those uh, are in the next slide or two. One thing to be aware of if you have a large cluster, which would be a large number of nodes, uh, that the, the system jobs may have to handle large quantities of node host names. Uh, they may have to be self-throttling. Uh, if you were to instantly turn on the power to 10,000 compute nodes, all at the same time, if let's say you could do that in actual fact, there'd be a huge power spike and, and you will want to avoid those kinds of things. Um, also, with a, a large cluster, you're going to want some kind of a daemon process that will maintain power uh, state for reporting. You'll, you'll see why as we get into this. Okay. Uh, the first uh, power system job is defined with a parameter known as cluster query URL. And this is used by Moab to query the current power state of all the nodes in the cluster. 
And Moab runs it at the start of a scheduling cycle. So if you've defined this uh, URL for a power resource manager, Moab will run it at, uh, at the time when it queries all of the resource managers. The other uh, power system job is defined by node power URL. And Moab uses this to power on and off compute nodes, okay? Uh, there are a couple of parameters that can be passed. Obviously, they're mutually exclusive, on or off. Uh, on means I need the node up and running, so it'll be available for job scheduling. Off to take it down so it can't run any jobs and so on. This thing is normally run, if you're doing green computing, at the end of the Moab scheduling cycle. It can be run on an on-demand basis that we'll, we'll talk about here. Okay, more about the uh, Power Cluster Query script. Its purpose is, is to report the power state of all the nodes in the cluster. Uh, it is a synchronous operation. This is um, one system job that does block Moab from doing scheduling while it is running. And basically, it, uh, if you were to just look at this in a simple manner, it's pr it, it has the requirement of reading the power state of every node and passing that power state on to Moab. And like I said, it'll, Moab's going to block until it gets all the power states reported or times out. There is a timeout parameter that's associated with this. Um, here's an example of what the output of this system job should look like. The items in blue here, like right there and here, are the things that are required of this script. Okay, we've got an example. We, we have some uh, reference power scripts that we've created. And we also add the system temperature and CPU temperature if those things are available. And output those. So they can become generic metrics and so on. Um, so that's an example. That might be the smallest type I've got in here. So. Um, the node power script, like I said earlier, its purpose is to change the power state of the node. It is an asynchronous operation, so Mob's just going to start it up and let it go. Uh, this script needs to interface with the power management system in order to turn nodes on and off. Now, every um, system vendor, hardware vendor, usually has their own power management software. Uh, maybe, you know, they usually deal with IPMI. Uh, different vendors have different names for it. I know HP is... ILO and Dell is DRAC and, you know, they all have different things. And uh, so the node power script is going to have to interface with whatever power management system you have. And, and uh, this is one of those where if you have a very large cluster, you would need to uh, perhaps introduce throttling. Uh, if it takes time to power on nodes, you know, going from one to the next uh, that the script has to do, and there's sufficient time in there, you may not have to do any throttling at all. This is also subject to uh, a timeout limit that depends on the operation that it's performing, which is powering on or powering off. Uh, this script has input parameters. It's given a list of node host names as a common delimited list, and then also a parameter of on or off, uh, telling the script what it is supposed to do. Like I mentioned, we have created some new reference scripts. Um, we were getting reports in product management. I keep in touch with different uh, people in the field each week, and we were getting reports saying customers are having a really, really difficult time implementing power management, green computing, and they say it doesn't work. And doing some research, uh, I found out we have no reference scripts that we gave anybody. We had none. And so uh, we engaged engineering into this to find out what was out there, what was in the code. Uh, they verified things do work and so on. Uh, needed some few enhancements that would be nice. And then had them create some reference scripts. And there are four in this. The first one is the one you would use for the cluster query URL. Uh, the next one is for the node power URL to control the power on and off. Uh, we created a monitor daemon 
And then there's one script that's just configuration information that make it really easy for you to configure these scripts. Uh, all four of them are based on Python, and all of them were created uh, and work with OpenIPMI. Okay? And all of the reference scripts have been tested by uh, our QA group on the system hardware that the Q QA group has. And these are, have become part of regression tests in QA so that we always test these features. So these reference scripts are actual working scripts that have been tested and, and we know they operate. Um, just to talk about how all these different pieces or, or to illustrate how all these different pieces work together, I mentioned that uh, the node power URL can be executed by Moab if an administrator uh, decides to tell Moab to power on or off a uh, compute node independently of green computing. And so if there's an, uh, an administrator-initiated uh, occurrence, Moab immediately runs that script, as you just saw in the little animation there, and you know, powers off the node or possibly powers it on. The other method is through uh, green policy, initiating power management. And as I mentioned earlier, Moab will run these scripts as part of the scheduling cycle. We'll see a little illustration with that. If uh, it turns nodes on and off, then when the scheduling cycle uh, has the, uh, the cluster query script run, it'll go and uh, query all of the states, the power states, and then report them up to Moab. Then Moab goes on with its scheduling cycle. Now that introduces a problem if it were to operate exactly that way. Because we, it, it can, if you have a lot of nodes, it can take a long time to query the power state. We don't want to block Moab scheduling for that long. Okay, <clears throat> because it is, because it's a, a resource manager update at the start of a scheduling cycle, you don't want to block the cycle. Okay, so the solution, uh, which we have implemented with the reference scripts, is to have a monitor daemon that, well, not necessarily continuously, but that queries the power state of all the compute nodes and does so uh, at a regular interval. And it'll take these node power states and record them in a file. And then what happens when Moab runs that cluster query URL, that re one we've created in the reference script reads the, the power states out of the file, so it's very quick, okay, just very, very quick. And so Moab obtains the information it needs uh, and without really uh, slowing down during the scheduling. Now this power cluster query script the first thing it does when it actually runs, when Moab starts it up, is it checks, is there a power monitor daemon running? If there isn't, it starts it up. So uh, this daemon's always running. If for some reason it were knocked out of commission and was not running, okay, the very next time that cluster query URL runs, the daemon will be restarted. So it'll keep going and, and you won't have to worry about looking out for that. Um, like I said, the daemon will gather the power state, and it will do so every poll interval. This is a value that you can set that's independent of the scheduling uh, interval. And uh, this daemon actually goes out and po pulls the power state of every node. Uh, in our example, using the, IP, the Open MPI um, power management system. Um, stores that state in a new f temporary file after polling all of the nodes replaces the file that is read by the uh, power cluster query script uh, with this new file. So we'll see this with a little animation here. Uh, the daemon pulls all the nodes, recording them in a temporary file, and then replaces the one uh, that uh, the cluster query reads, so that when Moab goes to... Uh, read this at the start of a scheduling cycle. Whoops. Well, I thought there would be an animation there, but maybe it went when I blinked, because it does go fast. But it basically uh, reads these power states and reports them straight to Moab very, very quickly. Okay. Configuring power management inside Moab. You have to define a power resource manager, okay? This will not be torque. Torque is a workload resource manager, 
Okay. And, whoops. Oh, this remote does work now. <laughs> I missed the uh, laser pointer. Uh, in this example, I named it IPMI since that was the system the reference scripts were uh, working with. It must be defined as type native and the resource manager type is provisioning, meaning it has to do with node provisioning and things like that. And then you have to give it the two URLs. This one is the uh, node power state control. This one queries the uh, power states. Okay, That defines the power resource manager. Next, you've got to define time limits for powering on a node and powering off, powering off a node and powering on a node. Okay, here I've got examples of a minute and a half for powering off and five minutes for powering on. And it may be that your, your compute nodes take even longer. Okay, and let's say it takes nine minutes, go like 10 minutes or something like that. You don't want to put it right exactly on because uh, there may be minor variations in, in power-up sequences. But it needs to be long enough that you know if it hasn't done it by now, there's something wrong and there will be a timeout, okay, at, at which point Moab can perform certain actions. Um, another thing you'll want to do is if you want to know when Moab powers on or off uh, compute nodes, that is known as a node modification event. And so you have to make sure that Moab records uh, node modification events because I, I believe the default is that it does not. Okay, and so you'll want to turn that on in your Moab configuration file. Um, the other thing left to do to configure uh, power management is to edit this config.py file and set these variables inside of uh, that file. These are Python variables. This, this reference scripts make an assumption that the IPMI interface into every compute node uses the same username and password, okay? Uh, which I would expect to normally be the case. You would set these here. You need to tell the scripts uh, where the Moab home directory is. Uh, this is how long you are, you want how much time between polling intervals that the daemon is going to do, uh, querying power state. This is the name of the temporary uh, node power state file. The scripts know where the, the one is that they're going to read, and so it, you've just got to give the name of the temporary file. And then you've also got to specify a mapping file that maps a Moab node name, as it knows the nodes, to the baseboard management controller's address. Okay, And this is an example of this mapping file. You can specify, you have to specify one per line, the Moab node name, how, whatever name it is, usually the host name, and then the IPMI, oh, they would got the wrong file on here. That should say .example.com. It must be fully qualified. Um, I had updated that and they haven't got that. I thought they had the right one on and they haven't got it on here. Um, anyway, it must be a fully qualified uh, name, okay? It can't just be the short host name. Or it can be an IP address. So e either way, you, and you have to put that for every node that you're going to uh, do this to in, in that file. So the scripts can translate what Moab tells them in that host, that comma delimited host name list, uh, and can translate it into the actual uh, one needed by the scripts. Okay, the other thing you're going to have to do is highly likely you'll have to customize the power management scripts, and there will be two of them that you will do this to. You're going to have to go into the script that performs the, the node power control and replace the power on off commands that we've got in there for open IPMI with whatever the commands are for your system. Okay, they may be very similar, they may not be, but you'll have to. You'll at least, there, there are comments and things in there. You'll know where to do it at, okay? Um, the other thing that you can do with this script is you can replace off with something else. For instance, I want to sleep the node. You know, you can get some power savings from that, but it very quickly comes back online. You may want to hibernate it. 
you may want to perform an orderly shutdown, and there's a very good reason for doing that. Um, if you have uh, uh, network file systems mounted and so on, or even a local file system, you'll want to make sure the caches get flushed to disk. Because off, at least in open IPMI, means off. Click, and the power is off. And anything cached just got lost, and it can screw up your file systems. Okay? Just depends on what the vendors did as to uh, what, what it's actually going to do. The other thing is to uh, edit the monitor daemon script and replace the commands in there with your power management systems commands. These are the commands to query the node uh, power state. Okay? Um, if you do modify the node power URL script to do one of these alternate things, you'll also have to deal with checking for off, because you could have really off, as well as whatever it is you're going to do, you know, like sleep. You'd have to check for sleep or off and report it as off to Moab, okay? <clears throat> okay, that's power management in Moab, how it works, how you would configure it, and things like that. And uh, we're going to talk now, how do we make this automated so that I do green computing or automatic power management. We're going to talk about the theory of operation behind Moab green computing, what are the policies you use to configure it, and, and the use case for green computing. The first thing you have to understand is that green computing absolutely requires power management, which is why we talked about it first, okay? You must configure the power management and you must manually verify it works correctly before you go implement the green computing. Because if you don't do that and something's wrong, you aren't gonna know, well, is it the power management or is it the green computing stuff? And so you really need to verify the power management works first. Um, green computing, uh, to perform automatic power management has three things we're going to talk about here. There's the concept of a green pool, and then there's how is the green pool maintained and how does it operate? How does Moab work with it? Okay, The green pool is a pool of idle nodes that are powered on but not running any workload. They're basically on standby for jobs coming in. Okay, obviously this would be for a situation where you have a queue that is empty sometimes. If you never have an empty queue, you won't need green computing at all. Okay, but if you do, this can be very handy. Um, the purpose of the green pool is to balance starting a job quickly against saving power. Okay, saving the cost of, of having nodes powered on. Because if you don't have a green pool, uh, when nodes com or when jobs complete and nodes are released from the job, they would be immediately powered off. Okay, if you don't have a green pool, and then if a job came in, you'd have to power on the nodes, and that may take a long time, even longer than the job may need to run, and you don't want to do that. So you want to have a green pool. Um, the administrator configures the green pool size. There is a parameter we're going to see. And Moab uses this as a target that it's supposed to maintain. And so uh, if a job takes some of the idle nodes out of the green pool, Moab will power on nodes that are off in order to restore the green pool back to its size. Any jobs complete, idle nodes are returned to the green pool. After a while, it will take the excess nodes, power them off. You know, so it's going to keep that pool at, at the prescribed size. Be aware that the default size, if you don't configure the green pool, is zero, which is why I said that if you don't configure it, it will immediately power off and on, on nodes, and you aren't, you aren't going to want to do that. Okay. Um, one thing that is brand new that has just come out in Moab 7.2.2, which I checked an hour ago, and it is on the download site now, because uh, it wasn't yesterday morning, I think, when I checked. Uh, and this feature is now available. There is a new green pool priority F parameter that you can give. It's a global parameter uh, that 
follows the pattern established by the priority F option in the uh, node allocation policy, priority, uh, where you can define a function as to exactly how you want to calculate priority. Well, you can do the same thing with this parameter here. In this example, we're just assigning a random value between 0 and 10,000 to each eligible node, and I'll explain what eligible nodes are. And when Moab needs, needs to choose some, some nodes from a, a set of eligible nodes, it'll use this to compute a priority, and it can be more than just random. And, uh, and then it'll choose the value uh, or the node with the highest value that's been computed. And like I said, this just became available uh, today or maybe yesterday afternoon. What Moab uses this function for is if it's got more idle nodes than the green pool says it should have, it will execute this function, if you've specified it, for each of those idle nodes and then choose uh, which nodes to power off based on the priority that's calculated for them. It also does it for nodes that are powered off to choose which ones to power on when it is replenishing the green pool, okay, if the green pool is dropped below its si target size. If you don't specify this function, Moab's default uh, behavior is to go from the first node to the last node, okay? We've had customers who, who uh, well, there are other things. Well, may, maybe what I'll do is, is tell that story when we get to the other things so you'll, you'll see the whole picture. But things weren't working the way they wanted because they hadn't configured things correctly. And, and one of the things they saw is, well, things are starting at the beginning always. And, well, they had no way of, of specifying the priority, and so we've added this so they had control over it. Um, the way the green pool operates, when a job gets started and, and Moab is scheduling nodes or allocating nodes for the job, if there are power, enough powered on nodes available for the job, Moab will choose them first, but only if the node allocation policy is so configured, and we'll talk about what that means, okay? If there are green pool idle nodes, Moab will also choose them, okay, uh, for starting up the job. If, however, there are no powered on nodes available, Moab will choose from among the powered off nodes using the node allocation policy, not that prior um, green pool priority F function, because it's choosing nodes right now using the node allocation policy. But the idea here that I want to convey is you want to make that node allocation policy choose the powered on nodes first and then go to powered off nodes second. Whoops. Um, what Moab does then is as soon as it has allocated nodes, whether they're powered on or off, it puts a job reservation on the nodes, all of them, on or off. And then if off nodes were chosen, Moab will start a power system job for just those off nodes, okay? And remember now, those nodes are in a job reservation. So the job's not going to start immediately. Also, the nodes will not be used uh, by other jobs because of this reservation because it's waiting for the report back that these other nodes are powered on. And so when... Moab is told that the, those off nodes are powered on and the workload resource manager reports that the node is idle. That's when Moab will go ahead and start the job at that point. Okay. Um, green pool replenishment. Moab uses that green pool priority F to choose powered off nodes. Starts up a system job to power them up. Okay. And... Uh, when it does so, this will increase the idle nodes count up, you know, brings it back up to whatever it's set at, and uh, then does the opposite when uh, jobs complete and release nodes. The nodes get returned to the green pool, and after a configurable amount of time that, that administrators can control, uh, Moab will use that green pool priority F function to choose which of the excess idle nodes to power down. Okay, and there are good reasons for doing that. And again, if you don't define that function, it'll just go from the lowest to the, the highest, uh, or first to the last nodes. And then it'll go ahead and start a power system job to power down the chosen nodes, which winds up decreasing the uh, 
idle node count down to the green pool size. So let's take a look at how this operates. <clears throat> Here we have uh, initially some running jobs, a red job with four nodes and orange with four nodes and yellow with two nodes and brown with four nodes. We've also got a green pool of six nodes and then we have four nodes that are powered off. Um, Moab's going to start a two node blue job. The node allocation policy is going to allocate two of the idle nodes to the blue job and this will drop the uh, green pool count to four. And then Moab's going to replenish the green pool by powering up two powered off nodes. And then that count will go back up to six, which is the target size after, you know, some, the monitor demons done the query and the cluster query gets the new state. Then, okay, the green pool's back up to six. Now let's say Moab's going to start a seven node purple job. The node allocation policy is going to allocate all six free nodes in the green pool plus one powered off node. Uh, because the job's requesting more than what the green pool has. So this will drop the green pool count to zero. Mob's going to create, remember, a job reservation for all seven nodes, the green idle nodes and the one powered off node. Mob will go ahead and start the node power system job to power on the job for the one uh, powered off node for the purple job and then one node to replenish the green pool because that's all it's got left to replenish the green pool with. And this w will bring the uh, green pool count up to one when it uh, you know, gets a status update reported back to it. Okay. At, at that point, when uh, it reports back that the node is powered up, Moab starts the purple job on those seven nodes. And away it goes. Um, when jobs finish, Let's say the blue job finishes. It's going to return the two idle nodes to the green pool. The green pool count's going to become three. And then uh, let's say the purple job finishes. Seven idle nodes get returned to the green pool. That'll raise the pool count up to 10. Okay. And after this idle node interval goes by, Mob's going to start a node power job to power down four of those excess idle nodes to restore it back to its configured size, which is going to be uh, six, on the next successful power state update that happens after the nodes are um, powered off. And the count goes back to six. Okay. Here's how we configure green computing in Moab. First thing you have to do is enable it. And you do so through this uh, power policy option on a node configuration. This one will turn on green computing for all compute nodes in the cluster because it's assigned to the, the default node configuration. Power policy has two values, static and on-demand. It must be on-demand to turn on green computing. Okay, static is the default if you don't define anything. Um, you can turn on green computing for specific nodes only, which means you won't do this, but you have to go put this on every node you want to do it to. So let's say you have a very large cluster and you want 20% of the nodes only to, to be used for green computing. Okay, you would put this parameter on those 20% of those nodes you want to have subject to that green policy and it'll only work with those 20% of the nodes. Um, like I said, I think we've talked about that, so we'll go on. You must define what the green pool is. It's called the max green standby pool size. It's a parameter, I've got 20 here, okay? Seems kind of silly to do one if you don't ever have a job that ever runs one node, you know? Pick some, you're gonna have to experiment and see, you know, what is kind of the average or something, uh, nodes that are requested for jobs and, and pick something that'll make sense. Um, you'll also need to set this idle time wait threshold here, this, which is, how long Moab will wait when there are excess idle nodes before it will power it down, okay? Uh, this needs to be longer than the node power on and power off duration limits that were specified, you know, up in by those two parameters up in uh, the power management section that we discussed. Um, you have to define, you know, a green pool priority F 
uh, policy if you want to use one. Uh, like I said, this example does a random value, and, and I actually show this example because this is something somebody wanted, uh, an HPC administrator wanted to do. He wanted to make sure that all of his nodes over time went through a power cycle so he knew it's, it still worked on those nodes. And so this randomization for eventually will force all the nodes to go through at least a power cycle, not just the same ones over and over. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can use any of the, the variable names or the met G metrics or anything available in the priority function of the node allocation policy. You can also use in this green pool priority F statement. And so you can use any of those things. I think there's like between 20 and 30 of them to decide which nodes to power off. Could be based on temperature. It could be anything that's available. Okay. Just a reminder, if you don't specify, it'll go first to last. Okay, I had mentioned that you must configure the node allocation policy in such a manner that it will choose powered on nodes first. To do this, you must ha use a node allocation policy of priority, okay? And you're going to have to define a priority F function that has as, that uses this power variable. This power variable has zero for off and one for on. You'll notice I have a very large multiplier here, one million, plus whatever other factors I'm interested in deciding the priority of nodes, okay? This, um, this multiplier must be greater than the sum of all the other factors. So this value here must be greater than all those things added together, or you may get nodes powered on and off that you don't want to have <laughs> or chosen, you know, for power on and off that you don't want to have. Uh, we had, a, and this, the story I'm telling, we had a customer who had nodes getting powered on when there were nodes available and didn't understand what was going on. Well, there was no, wasn't using the power variable to say, hey, I want to choose from all the powered on nodes first and all the powered off nodes last. And so that's what was missing from the uh, priority F formula. Um, okay, if you're not going to use uh, green on all of the nodes, then you'll have to also define this priority F on all the nodes so that Moab will use them for them. Okay. Uh, the use case for green computing, really, it's lower your operational costs. Save money through not using power. It is the use case. There are other use cases um, and other means of, of saving power. Some things that we're looking at in the future are adding additional power saving states uh, that are recognized, not just on off, uh, adding the support for performance states. Um, we'll talk a little bit about power caps and, and then the ultimate in the future is, is bidirectional communication with the power grid. Additional states that we're looking at, uh, suspend, it's basically the processor executing a halt instruction, so an interrupt takes it out of it. Least amount of power savings, but boy, it's fast, returning to a running state. Um, sleep, you have more power savings. Uh, there is more circuitry turned off when you're in sleep mode. It, it is a little bit slower. I time my wife's desktop, it takes 25 seconds to return from a sleep state. Uh, hibernate, you know, that eventually turns the system off, so you're going to save the most power there. Uh, but it does require persistent storage to save the state, you know, save the memory and the state of the processor and everything else. And an orderly shutdown is like hibernate. Uh, the advantage of it is it flushes the file systems on shutdown, but it does have the slowest return to the running state because you're doing a full reboot, Okay. Performance states, um, or P states, this is active control of the clock frequency of the processor, okay? Uh, this could be done through a job submission option, for instance, allowing the user to specify a clock frequency that they want the job to run at, you know, all the processors to run at. And, and there's a reason for this that I'll show you, I think, in the next slide. Another way this could be done is through an administrator configuration. Linux has what are called power governors. There are five different named ones. Um, 
These are them. The performance state says, hey, run everything at the highest clock frequency, that's it. Power save, run everything at the lowest power frequency, that's it. On demand says, hey, based on the load that the OS detects, the processor has, alternate between the highest and lowest frequencies. Now you have to be aware that changing the clock frequency incurs overhead. You know, I'm, I'm sure the processor halts, you know, all the circuitry gets halted while it changes the frequency and then lets it resume. That takes time. Uh, conservative is a power governor that alternates more slowly than on-demand and uses all the available frequencies, you, but not just the highest and lowest. And then user space gives you absolute total control. Um, here's a reason for why you want to be able to allow a user to specify uh, a clock frequency. These are two NAS benchmarks. Um, and as you can see, uh, these were benchmarks done at different clock frequencies. And, you can, and the power use was measured as well as the, um, the job run time. Well, that's the power use. And here's the elapsed time when the job ran. And I put in there this dashed green line showing you, OK, that's the best power savings. At, that would be 1.4 gigahertz. This is at 1.6 gigahertz. OK, so frequencies are different. You know, frequencies, depending on the application, OK, have different uh, power profiles. Oh, four, OK, yes. And we're going to make it in time, so. So you actually have to experiment with your applications and find out what's the best uh, clock frequency to operate. Now me, I look at this one and I go, you know what? I actually did the computations for this. Um, this is, you know, this is not from zero on up. This is a 1% increase in power, but you got a 10% reduction in job runtime. Oh, that's one sweet deal in my book. <laughs> you could run the application 11 times at that frequency for just 1% more power in the time it would take you, ten, you know, run it 10 times or, you know, et cetera. So there are things you'll want to look at and there are trade-offs. Power caps, we've seen this uh, required in Europe and increasingly so in the U.S. And we've got two sets of power caps, one on individual compute nodes. The new Intel Sandy Bridge has a uh, uh, processor, has a new interface called RAPL, the Running Average Power Limit, and you can actually give a power cap to the processor. And it will manage itself internally, keeping its power use underneath that power cap. And this is the interface that you, use, uh, that you would use this with. And this could be administered with Moab policies. Obviously, this would require either new RMs or capabilities of existing RMs to pass this information through. The other is a site-wide power cap, uh, where power companies are saying, uh, you get this much power, that's it. And everything must stay within that. And so it's not just individual processors, but it's the cluster as a whole, the cooling system, power use, even the power use by the power distribution units. You have to keep everything under the power cap. Uh, obviously, that will require new RMs to interface with like cooling systems and power distribution units. And then policies can trigger adjustments in those subsystems to keep usage below the limit. The last thing is communicating with the power grid. In the US, this is known as the smart grid concept. It's actually in use in some industries in a few places. I've talked with a power electrical uh, engineering professor who does power, uh, teaches power classes at the University of Utah and said it is in use in places in some industries. Um, this is basically like, let's say you have a very large HPC cluster. I need to power up 10,000 nodes to start a big job. And gee, that's going to take, you know, three more megawatts. I need to tell the power grid you need to come up with more power. How fast that can happen depends on the power generation plant. Uh, the professor said a coal-powered plant would take up to an hour to get up to speed with more power, natural gas, a few seconds. Um, same with completing a job. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use the power. You can have it. You know? And then the power grid can actually communicate in the other direction. Hey, it's hot. Everybody needs their air conditioner for the next six hours. Uh, we need you to use two megawatts or less, and so on and so forth. Okay, any questions?
Yes, sir. Um, power management is in Moab 7.2.2, which is now on the download site. Okay. And um, I believe, and, and that's power management's just there. Green computing, I'm trying to remember if that is part of Enterprise Edition or not. Do you know, Al? I can't remember. I think so, yeah. I think green computing, you know, the green pool and all that, is part of the Enterprise Edition. Yeah. The Perl scripts are in the 7.2.2, yes. They are in that. Okay. Yes, you had a question or? It was the same. Oh, same one? Okay. Yes. The Foley scripts used to be very serial. Are they parallel now? I don't know. I suspect not. Okay. I suspect they just, you know, go through. But, but the whole idea is these are reference scripts. Uh, you know, we set up a daemon so it'd be fast polling of the data. Um, and then we made sure they were working because the reason we, we did this is, like I stated at the beginning, we found customers couldn't get it going because they didn't have any example to look at. You know, oh, the other thing we did is we revised the documentation. Um, we go through... Uh, for green and power management, things are done that are task-oriented now. Okay, let's show you how to configure this piece. Let's show you how to configure this piece, et cetera, okay? Um, there is one more section I've talked with uh, documentation about just last week that I, we definitely want to add, which is how it works, okay? Which you just got, how this stuff works, okay? And because I feel it's very important to give everybody, here's the design behind everything. Here's how we intended it to work. You know, the theory of operation and stuff like that. So, okay, yeah. Tim, I have one other question. Does, does Torque and Moab, uh, does Moab know about Torque's mom hierarchies? I do not believe so, no. Okay. In fact, you might not want to shut down the node that everybody's talking to. Uh, actually, the, uh, the hierarchy, it will go around it. Because you, when you specify the hierarchy, you give a list of them, and it, they all talk to the first one. Well, if it doesn't respond, they'll talk to the second one. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that was taken care of long ago. For the, um, for the frequency popping, um... that's in the future. Oh, okay. okay. Once I got past green, I said future okay. things. Okay, those are things that we are looking at. So, in the future, when you implement this, would it be something that you could create? Like when you're submitting a job, you would tell it, okay, I want it at the highest frequency, and then when the job's finished, put it back down to the lowest. Frequency. Uh, yeah, it, whatever, I'm sure that the way it would be engineered, um, you could even, spe I could see specifying, for instance, to Torque, hey, this is what I w run at when I'm idle, mm -hmm. the lowest, right. okay? And I, I could easily see that. And then if you, you know, I would think you would do a Moab policy where if the user doesn't specify, you set it at whatever frequency you want. Highest, lowest. I'm sure there would be named ones, you this know, so stuff like that. Oh, really? Okay. So, so that would affect some of the underlying math that goes on with that. So if we were to put it at the lower frequency, obviously when you kick off your Moab job, you'd want it to preemptively turn the frequency back up before starting. So yeah, well, well, I'm sure the interface would say it would get past the torque because torque is the one who would actually turn it on, you know, or set the frequency, et cetera, the, yeah. The power management yeah. Team and whoever does it, but it would have to go... Oh, it, it, I'm it sure it would go with the job. The yeah, job. yes, yes, I, yeah. No, I would say it would have to go before the job starts because if it has to bump up the frequency, you want it at the highest level before the job Right, starts. And, and the PBS mom could do that before it actually starts the job, so... Sure. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much.